Leia here from LeiaFirstSci.com, and in this video I will give you a quick introduction to the different types of spectroscopy that you will encounter in the standard organic chemistry course. While I will not go into the specific graph interpretation details, I will show you when and how to use the information given so that you can come up with an educated guess to identify the molecule in question. And the best part is, and don't tell anyone I said this, is that you don't really have to understand the mechanics or what is happening within the type of spectroscopy. As long as you know how to read and interpret the graphs, you should be okay doing these types of problems. The most common type of spectroscopy problem you will come across, and my favorite, is NMR. NMR stands for Nuclear Magnetic Resonance. There are two types of NMR spectrum that you will be studying. The first is HNMR, and the second is CNMR. When given a CNMR spectrum, analyze it in terms of what type of carbon atoms you have, and potentially how many carbons. That's all you need to see from carbon NMR. HNMR, if given on your practice problem, will essentially give you the entire story of the molecule. It gives you the relationship between the hydrogen atoms, what atoms they are attached to, and in turn how these different groups relate to each other. Your HNMR graph will show up with numbers ranging from 0 to 13, and you will have peaks of various sizes and shapes. So let's draw in some random ones for now, and yes, I will go through how to analyze these in a future video. At first glance, these look scary. However, there are many things you can deduce from these peaks if you understand it, including the types of atoms that are attached, the number of hydrogens within the neighboring molecule, and how the different pieces fit together with each other. You will likely be given a table with numbers, but don't memorize them. Instead, study and try to understand the different peaks, where they show up, and what they mean in the molecule. Another common graph that you will see is the IR graph, or infrared spectroscopy. The graph for IR will range from the numbers between 0 and approximately 4,000. Within this graph, you will see many different upside-down hills, valleys, and just peaks overall. Unlike NMR, with IR you cannot look at the graph and definitively say this applies to this specific group or this specific molecule. However, if you are given IR in a problem, this is very useful for identifying functional groups. Just like with NMR, you will be given a table of values and descriptions of the bands that you will find. Don't memorize them. Instead, analyze them on a graph and learn to recognize the different bands, where they show up, and how they show up in relation to other ones. IR will typically be given in a problem together with something like mass spec or NMR, and you can use these two graphs in conjunction to help come up with a molecule. Another very useful and hard to read graph is going to be mass spec or mass spectroscopy. This graph shows you how when a molecule is broken down, what the different fragments look like. Some students will analyze mass spec and panic because they cannot put the pieces together. However, this is not what I want you to focus on. What you want to look for in your mass spec is your highest number, which gives you the molecular weight of your molecule, and this ultimately helps you find the molecular formula. One more thing that mass spec is very useful for is helping you identify specific atoms within your molecule, such as a bromine or a chlorine atom. While you can go into more detail to try to analyze the fragments to see what your molecule is, don't waste your time on this. Instead, just take your formula, go to your NMR, try to put the molecule together, go to your IR, try to find your functional groups, and using all of them together, you should be able to come up with a decent molecular formula and molecular structure. In future videos, I will break down the analysis of the different spectroscopy and walk you through a few problems to help you understand. But the purpose of this video is just to give you an introduction of what it is that you're looking at and how you can use the different graphs together in a way that will help you identify key features in each one and come up with a solution quickly and concisely. Are you struggling with organic chemistry? Are you looking for information to guide you through the course and help you succeed? If so, download my ebook, 10 Secrets to Acing Organic Chemistry, using the link below, 
or visit layofersidecom slash orgo secrets. That's O-R-G-O secrets. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and even share it with a friend or two. If you have any questions regarding this video, leave a comment below or contact me through my Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash There will be many related videos posted over the course of the semester, so go ahead and click the subscribe button to ensure that you don't miss out.